Hello and welcome to Be Kind Connects. I'm your host, Shabnam Islam. And joining us today is Tracy McWhorter. Tracy is an award-winning public health nutritionist, speaker, author, and a longtime vegan who has made it her mission to teach people how and why to live a healthy vegan lifestyle for over the last three decades. Most importantly, she is the creator of the 10 million Black women black vegan women movement which aims to shift the paradigm of black women's health ladies and gentlemen tracy mccorder is in the house (laughs) hi shabnam thank you for having me well it is i am so overjoyed to have you here because i've been following your career for since i've been vegan and um so this is this feels like uh the culmination of of what i've been trying to do for quite some time having you in the hot seat so thank you for being here thank you thank you i appreciate that you know, often when we talk about the things that get people to shift to veganism, we're thinking about uh, the environment, animals, or their health. But your start story actually starts with civil rights icon Dick Gregory during your sophomore year at Amherst College. So I think our viewers would like to know, what was the most poignant message that resonated with you that helped you make that change into that vegetarian lifestyle? Yeah, so my mother was health conscious when we were growing up in DC in the in the 70s and 80s, so I was familiar with the idea of it, right? And then and then of of healthy eating and I went to um Sidwell Friends School here in DC from 3rd through 12th grade and I had two teachers who were vegetarian and I dismissed it. Um, you know, wrote a petition against having a vegan camping trip. So I was familiar with the idea of it, but you know, I was not interested in it at all and, and, and liked really unhealthy food. So what really resonated e about Dick Gregory and Dick Gregory talking about it was the connection that he made with why he became vegan because he extended the um, practice of nonviolence and compassion to animals. And then at first in 1965, because of the civil rights movement, and then became a vegan in 1967 for health reasons. And, you know, he was, he had already been vegan for 20 years and was really promoting health, particularly among African-Americans by that time. And so he made connections with the food industry, the civil rights movement, social justice, just liberation. Um, And, you know, the term, intersectionality had not been popularized and coined by Kimberly Crenshaw at that time. And so, but that's what he was doing, making all these connections. And I was very interested in social justice causes. And so making those connections is what resonated for me. That's how I was finally able to hear it and really be moved by it. And back then in the eighties, veganism isn't what it is today. So you really were were more of a vegetarian at the time, correct? I started as a vegetarian, yes. And that's only because I, I it took me a year, over a year to give up cheese. But I knew, I mean, he was talking about veganism. It's just that back in that in, in that decade, we were, and in, in probably before, vegetarianism was the umbrella term. So you could be raw, vegan, vegan, all of that, but, the, but everybody was vegetarian, right? It's like right. black you know, black, and then under that, you're Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latina, you know, Latina, all of uh, African-American. So it was kind of an umbrella term, but he was talking about veganism, but I I wanted to go vegan right away, but I couldn't let go of cheese. That took a while, so. So tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did you actually make that? You know, it was like a year, year and a half after the vegan, uh, the the, the talk, so. Yeah, so I went home for the summer and read everything I could about vegetarianism. And this is 10 years before we had the internet. And um, so I was going to the library reading about it. And by the end of that summer, I decided along with my mom and my sister who were reading, one of my sisters who was reading the books with me, both, both of them were, we were doing it together and discussing it. Um, I decided to go vegetarian by, um, September of 1986, but I was taking my junior year away. So I spent the first semester in Nairobi, Kenya, and I had signed up for the program months before as a vegetarian. And so I couldn't be a vegetarian while I was in the program, but I had some wonderful up close and personal experiences on safari, 
um, and living with uh, semi no Samburu semi nomadic um, camel and goat herders. So, you know, I got to study and be around animals in their environment. And that is really, and you know, it was at one point when we were being served an animal that was killed on safari by someone else at a restaurant. It was a gazelle kind of looking animal that was um, roasted and served to us. And it was at that time that I said, I, I just, I, I can't do it. I can't, I'll never eat another piece of meat again. And I didn't, and that happened in Kenya. And then I went home to DC for the spring semester. I went to Howard University and I was walking back and forth to campus from home. And I just started looking around and there were all these vegan restaurants on my way home and, and to school. And they were black owned. And so there were 13 black owned vegan, 100% vegan cafes and, and health food stores in Washington, D.C., and they were the only 100% vegan establishments in the city at that time, and they had been there since um, the early 70s. So there was already this big black vegan community that I just didn't know anything about in my own backyard. So that's where I learned how to be vegan, you know, going to cooking classes, listening to lectures, eating there, just immersing myself and soaking everything up. And so, you know, I learned about raw veganism, like all kinds, fruitarianism, breatharian, breatharianism, all of that stuff, breatharianism, whatever it's called. Um, and, you know, just every, there were so many people um, talking about it. There were vegan food trucks at all of the, the city festivals, the plaza celebrations. It was just a normal thing once I found out about the community. So, that's kind of how I, you know, immersed myself into it and just decided, okay, I need to let go of cheese and I'm going to do it. So when I went back back to school for my senior year at Amherst College, I, um, I just had to read all about how unhealthy cheese is and how cruel, the cruelty involved in its production while I was still eating cheese. And so it was working on me, you know, in the background until eventually, you know, I was able to let it go and just say it's not worth my health, you know, for this momentary pleasure of a piece of cheese in my mouth. But that did take about a year and a half to get there. And now fast forward, you are inspiring so many people to shift towards a plant-based lifestyle uh, through your nutrition, through many avenues, right? You've also two books, By Any Greens Necessary, A Revolutionary Guide for Black Women Who Want to eat great, get healthy, and lose weight and look fat. That's P-H-A-T, y'all, and it's a great book. <laughs> and then, of course, she has Ageless Vegan, The Secret to Living a Long and Healthy Plant-Based Life. Now, my question is, what actually inspired you to write By Any Greens Necessary? And Because it's a book I wanted to read, and, you know, at that time, yeah, Toni Morrison said, if there's a book you want to read and it hasn't been written yet, you have to write it. And so there were not any, there were no, again, you know, this is um, before all, you know, all of the social media that we know about now, you had to still read books and to get this information primarily. And there were not books that were, that were geared to black women. And so I wrote that book and I had um, already got, decided to change professions. I was a museum director at first, and then I went to grad, went back to school. I went to graduate school and got a master's degree in public health nutrition. So I made teaching veganism my profession. And so this is, and writing is my first love. So writing a book was one of the ways for me to spread the message and to focus on black women in particular, because we're fabulous, but even still, um, we have among the worst health outcomes in the country. And so I really wanted to talk to black women in particular. I love that so much. And so what 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 can your readers see that you expanded upon in Ageless Speak? Now, is that also what you would you say still geared towards the black and brown community or are you say or do you think it's like an everybody should read type of book? Um, that one is more of a cookbook. So that one has, you know, the first book by any grains necessary was was kind of a manifesto why to do it, um, how to do it. And we have some of that in Ageless Vegan, but it was really to celebrate the 30th anniversary of my mom and me being vegan. And so we shared 100 of our favorite vegan recipes. Um, and so it's really more of a cookbook. 
And so that is for it, you know, and but it's also unique because we're a black mother daughter, um, you know, duo who's been vegan and, and spreading the word about it for the last 30 years. So yeah, I so really we, we were focused on cooking and, and delicious food and just showing what our what our lifestyle has been like for the last 30 years. I love that you talk so much about your family, um, your mother and your relationship with her. And, you know, I come from uh, South East, South Indian culture. So it's interesting because my parents are consistently like, I will never go vegan, <laughs> never do it. <laughs> and so lovely because when I'm there, they make sure that like, I have a separate fridge and all my food is there. Like, you know, they do the best that they can. And she's always veganizing Indian foods for me, um, deshi fruits for me. So um, how would you express to people who are kind of like probably in my boat that want to be in your boat, right? Like, how do we, how do we get that yeah. familial uh, attachment on that boat? Yeah, I was fortunate again, you know, because my mother was already health conscious. So, um, yeah, I think, and, and one of my sisters too, the three of us going vegan together was so helpful from the beginning. But what I tell folks is um, start with yourself first and be an example, right? So just focus on yourself. I know there's a lot of urgency, especially for, this isn't you, but you know, for people who just become vegan, um, they wanna share the message and evangelize to everybody, you know? Um, but I say focus on yourself first, right? And you do, you be, uh, you, you know, you do it the way that you want to do it and just focus on yourself and then be an example and be available to answer questions and that kind of thing, because they'll be watching you, you know, they're going to see how it's going for you, how you're doing. Is it sustainable? Is it affordable? Is it delicious? Are you still healthy? You know, they're checking you out. So just do you. Protein deficient. <laughs> They're, they're, what are your what's your health what's your doctor saying you know they're checking you out so just focus on yourself don't worry about it um but you can also just share like so you know find uh community you know find folks who are vegan experts and vegan chefs who've written cookbooks you know that that um are part of your tradition and and you know share those you can share the books themselves or just you know, cook with your parents or cook with your family members, with your friends, based on the cultural traditions that someone else has already veganized and made sure, you know, those foods are delicious. That's what I would say. I mean, I just love that answer because it's honestly, I've done over 40 of these interviews with Vicon Connects and I have never heard the suggestion, focus on yourself. Mm. And it's so true. It's so true. When you do focus on yourself, really beautiful things happen, not only to yourself, but to the world around you. So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that lovely suggestion. So for those of you at home that are starting to transition, don't worry about what everybody else is saying. Focus on you yeah. and great things will happen. Um, what I really want to talk about with you, Tracy, is that uh, as someone who's worked in education for pretty much per, uh, a large portion of my life, um, you spearheaded the first ever federally funded vegan nutrition program with the Vegetarian Society of D.C., the Eat Smart program. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about this? Absolutely. So that was, uh, I was hired by VSDC to develop the curriculum and um, promote the program and teach these classes. So VSDC got federal funding from the Department of Health and Human Services to teach primarily low income DC residents how and why to go vegan to improve our health, right? And so it was in all four wards of the city. They gave us funding and they said, okay, you know, you figure out how to teach people how and why to go vegan and how to make it affordable, convenient, and delicious. So that was my first real task, you know, my first uh, real program, poly uh, program that I had to kind of create from um, what VSDC had in their proposal. And it was hugely successful. So. You know, folks were like, you're never going to get low income black folks around the city to go vegan and, you know, to want to do it. But with we did, we had um, we taught thousands of people over a five year period after our very first class. It was 12 weeks long. Then we um, shortened it to nine weeks. We had 200 people on our waiting list. It was a completely free program. 
Um, and it was, you know, we surveyed folks. We surveyed them before, we surveyed them afterwards. We cooked with them. We had experts come in and do cooking classes and we had lectures. We went to grocery stores. I actually went to grocery stores in all four wards of the city where I knew folks shops. And I went aisle by aisle by aisle when, and just wrote down what are the healthy foods, what are the um, convenient foods, what are the affordable foods. And I took them on grocery, grocery store chores. I mean, so, you know, I grew up in the city, so I knew I knew the folks, I knew what was, I knew the lay of the land, right? And we went to, to, to some of these black vegan restaurants that were still in existence. So I knew what to do, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and, you know, for me, the folks were just like me, I was them, you know, I wasn't interested at first, you know? And so I just was always trying to see it from their perspective. What did it take for me to be interested, for me to go vegan? And so I talked about those connections that Dick Gregory talked about. So I, you know, just tried to bring people in in all the ways that I could, right? And particularly with the food. Like we had food all the time, you know, delicious vegan food. And so what particular successes did you see with that program? Uh, what evidence was, were they able to provide? So within the time, um, folks, were, we asked them, what is your weight? What is your blood pressure level? What is your cholesterol level? Um, do you have, you know, certain conditions? Are you pre-diabetic? Are you diabetic? We asked people to actually go get their lab work done, but many folks weren't able to do that or in time. So we just asked them subjectively, what is your health? And we asked, you know, we gave them these markers. And then we asked them, after the program, after the 12 weeks, and then after the nine weeks, when we shortened the program, we asked them those same questions. Have you lost unwanted weight? Is your blood pressure, what is your blood pressure now compared to what it was? What is your cholesterol level? So, uh, and then we asked them, you know, do you feel more confident about being able to afford vegan food? Do you feel more confident in being able to cook vegan food? Do you feel more confident knowing how to prepare a nutritionally sound meal for yourself, for your family, for your children. So we had all of these, you know, we had a, uh, a data evaluator assess all of this information. So, you know, because we wanted the program to continue year after year and continue to get this funding. So we found across the board that folks lost weight, they lowered their pr blood pressure, they lowered their cholesterol levels. Some folks were able to get off of their medication we taught a senior citizens uh, version of this program and my mother was my teaching assistant. And a woman walked in, this is when it was still 12 weeks. A woman walked in with a cane, 12 weeks later, she walked out without a cane. We had doctors come in. I mean, this was, it was a very thorough, immersive program, right? Evidence-based, right? Yes. Like you're talking about data. We're talking about anthropometric measures. We're talking about actual science. Yeah. And, and and you and you did a good job. <laughs> you did an excellent job, and just what you know, we were able to continue. But this is what I'm saying. I'm you know because I I mean you know I learned how to do this in graduate school, and I also was I also was, you know, I represented the community that I was teaching. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. So I think all of these reasons for all of these reasons I was successful. But yeah, it, you know, bringing in experts was key. And are they, uh, is there any room for expansion? Like, I feel like this is a program we need to be having in 50 states across the United States. And it's just, it's, we're dragging our feet. Yeah. So this was, this was um, started in 2004. So 20 years ago, right? And it ran, um, I ran it 2004 to 2009. Um, I have since worked with DC public school systems with, um, university so i you know i've gone on to do other things this this program and we also had an advi a board of directors and advisory council and so um some of our uh board members and advisory council members were able to model it in other cities for a while but it's you know it's based on funding and it's based on interest right um so what i what i personally have done is kind of transformed what I did with Eastmart into what I'm doing now for 10 million Black vegan women. 
so what a great segue because that was my next question okay so, so let's uh, let's yeah. talk about 10 million black vegan women shall we yeah so i'm sorry i keep bumping into my table i'm animated so um let me slide back a little bit so yeah we so um right now we have um we've had about 25,000 we just started as a nonprofit um you know with 10 that with 10 million black vegan women we've had about 25,000 women sign up to go through our program it's now 21 days three weeks a 21 day vegan fresh start it's an online live program where black women go vegan together for 21 days and the first week is all preparation mental preparation kitchen preparation grocery shopping and then the last two weeks, the last 14 days, we actually go vegan together. So they get a 60 page guide that I created with um, with meal plans, with recipes, with cooking tips. And we go through it all together. We have uh, cooking classes online. We have guest experts come in. So it's, you know, it really is, you know, kind of an upgraded Eat Smart after all of these decades and similar success, right? Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're a very new nonprofit, but I, but I came up with this idea actually in 2020 because I wanted to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of By Itty Green's Necessary, my first book. And so I thought, well, what is a way to acknowledge, to kind of commemorate this 10 year anniversary? Cause you know, I'm very proud. It was a very influential book, it was a bestseller, all of that. And so I thought, uh, let me help 10,000 black women go vegan together online. Then COVID happened and we still did it, right? We still did it. Um, luckily it was already gonna be an online program and we had 10,000, we actually had 15,000 women. We were trying to get 10,000 women, 15,000 women signed up. Um, and, they, and we went through this 21 day live online program together, phenomenal results. And then crazily, I thought, well, if I could get 15,000 women, I can get 10 million women over years, right? Um, and that's what I want to do if they're, you know, eventually I will retire from this field and, you know, someone else will take over the organization, the nonprofit, and it will continue and we will reach that 10 million black women globally. Um, so, but that's really, that's where I am now. I just want to help as many women as I can and make it as easy and delicious and affordable and, and convenient for folks as possible because it, it transforms lives. And, and that's what I'm, I'm all about. And so what strategic partnerships, um, relationships do you feel like, uh, are instrumental to growing this movement of 10 million black vegan women? Well, what we... That's such an excellent question. So there are different types of partners. First and foremost, the women who have already gone through the program, we're creating an ambassador program for them so that they can bring you know, they can bring in, bring on their family, their friends, their social circles, their faith-based organizations, um, their sororities, their coworkers, right? So we want the women to go out and be ambassadors to bring in other women. So that's our first strategic relationship, right? Right there, our partners. Um, we want them to spread the word based on their own successes going through the programs. And then, um, you know, through funding, we partner with other organizations. So um, because primarily, you know, this takes it takes a lot of money um, to start a nonprofit, to maintain a nonprofit, to bring on the kind of experts that we want to help us elevate our program and, ex and our and our um, our offerings to expand them and, and make them better each year. And so really, we're just, you know, we're focused on um, raising our first $3 million in these first three years so that we can really have a solid foundation to grow our program with. So we're looking to, we're looking for partners, funding partners right now. That's our, that's our focus. I love, you know, for all of you at home, Tracy is just a pro at this because she keeps on jumping ahead on all the questions I'm yeah. about to ask. Like how can, who can get involved and how? So she just, she just sings up in there. Um, thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it because you are giving nuggets of information because I think people do want to get involved and we have access to so many people through our VKind community who would really love to see this movement grow and grow and grow. So I think 
what people would really want to know is what upcoming events do you have coming up where they can hear you speak? Well, um, then the probably the Vegan Women's Summit in New York in May. It's May 18th to May 20th. I think tickets are still available. We'll both be there. Um, yes. And so that's going to be a fabulous event. Believe it or not, this will be my first time going to VWS. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it, although I watch it online. So, uh, yeah, New York, New York in May will be the next one, uh, the next opportunity to meet me, come hear me speak. And I would love, love, love that. So, um, I hope folks can come. So, and people can obviously book you and your services, meet with you, do your cooking classes, anything that you offer through by any greens necessary. Of course. Yes, absolutely. My website, my personal website is by anygreensnecessary.com. So yes, I speak. Ah, there it is. Um, I speak online, in person, all over. Uh, you know, I travel all over the world. I've been doing that, um, um, as you have said, for the last 35 years. So I continue to do that. And um, I am also the founding CEO of my nonprofit, 10 Million Black Vegan Women. And so if you can go to 10 million black vegan women dot org to find out more about the nonprofit and the particular work that we are doing there to expand the number of black women who are vegans in this country and around the world. So you can reach me either way. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. So for all of you at home, let's ask Tracy the biggest question. Tracy, <laughs> as a public health nutritionist. Yes. What is the most successful strategy you find that helps people actually commit to a plant-based lifestyle? Woo, gosh, such a good question. Um, probably my answer changes over, has changed over the years. And um, I would say to, I always tell people to have grace with yourself, right? Have grace with yourself and understand that this is often a circular process. It's it's usually not linear for most people. So you want to go vegan. That's fantastic. Work backwards from there, right? So start veganizing some of your favorite meals. Start going to vegan restaurants. Get vegan cookbooks. Follow your favorite vegan influencers. Experiment. Have fun in the kitchen and eating out. Cooking with family and friends, right? And read, read, read. Read cookbooks. Um, watch documentaries about veganism. So if you're interested in health, watch health focused vegan documentaries. If you're interested in, in it for animal rights reasons, for uh, climate change reasons, watch those documentaries and films. So all of that is operating in the background while you may still be eating meat and dairy, but eating less of that and eating more plant-based foods, right? So these things all work in concert together. And know that you may start and you may stop and you may start and you may stop. It's not a race. It's not a contest. It's your personal journey. But understand that you, like so many millions of other people around the world, will get there, right? So have grace with yourself and keep going. If I had stopped, um, you know, after, my, after the challenges uh, I was having with letting go of cheese, I would not, I would never have gotten here, right? 35 years later, being able to influence so many people. And so use me as an example. You just keep going. You stop, you just start again the next day. Have grace with yourself, keep on going, you will get there. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Tracy McCorder dropping nuggets of gold left and right here only on Be Kind Connects. And that wraps up this edition of Be Kind Connects with the award-winning public health nutritionist and vegan activist, Tracy McCorder. To learn more about Tracy, her services, programs, and speaking engagements, please go to the website on your screen. And thank you so much for watching this episode. And to watch many more, go to www.bekindconnects.com. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.